Kabir Singh, the official remake of the 2017 Telugu blockbuster Arjun Reddy, released on the 21st of June 2019 to widespread criticism and social media outrage, with critics like Rajiv Mason calling it an unmistakably misogynistic film and Sucharita Tyagi, a film companion, going to the extent of stating that she hasn't felt more uncomfortable in a movie in a very long time. But while the social media outrage was gaining momentum, the movie as of 16 July 2019 has crossed 260 crores at the Indian box office, with the general public loving the film to an extent where they started taking pot shots at the critics who were against it. Even in the theater I watched, the college girls sitting next to me were hooting and cheering for Kabir Singh and were far from being uncomfortable, which goes on to say a lot about subjectivity in perspectives. To be honest, I am not on both sides. I enjoyed Arjun Reddy as well as Kabir Singh and do not find them as offensive and dangerous as the critics projected to be. But on the other hand, I don't really love the film. In fact, I have my own share of issues with it. like the excessive length and the ending which felt way too safe and happy for my personal taste to begin with but again i'm not here to criticize the film but only to share my opinion on the outrage the criticism and the recent controversial interview given by filmmaker sandeep wanga reddy to film companions anupama chopra which dropped in last week and really changed the game for sandeep because most people who were confused about what stand to take were finally given a confirmation of sorts by the filmmaker himself that he is indeed a dangerous mind at least that's how his image is being projected by the screenshots and memes that are being circulated online Now what if I told you that in my opinion Kabir Singh is a misunderstood film and Sandeep Wangareddy is one of the most misunderstood voices in recent times and it took a lot of courage for me to come out in public and state something as controversial as this when my filmmaking career hasn't even begun because I know I would be subject to a lot of scrutiny and people who remember would watch my films in future with a preconceived notion and might even judge my film differently but I strongly felt the need to do this video because I feel that criticism of this kind is toxic equivalent to censorship and violation of our basic fundamental rights I am not talking about the critics like Rajiv Masanth or Sucharita Tyagi I enjoy their work moreover they have every right to voice their opinion and i'm nobody to ask them not to but there is this liberals version of moral policing brewing in the online community a group of people who decide what is acceptable and what is not take for example this tweet by a popular stand up comedian Guys who loved Kabir Singh are the same as the ones who added a chaukida prefix before their names a few months ago. Now let me get a few things straight. Neither do I support any political party nor have I added a chaukida prefix before my name on Twitter, but I still enjoyed Kabir Singh and I also enjoy that comedian stand up show. So my point being most people on social media are now quick to judge and label people without giving it much of a thought. When I initially posted a story on Instagram stating that I enjoyed Kabir Singh as well as Arjun Reddy, I lost a few followers. And later when I posted in support of Sandeep Wangare Reddy after his interview with Film Companion, I lost a few more followers and even got a message from a stranger that read unfollowing you did not expect you to turn out to be such a male chauvinist apart from direct messages like this i also happen to see many passive aggressive posts from some of the people i follow indirectly targeting me and my opinion so all of this got me to thinking since i'm not a celebrity the number of followers i lost and the outrage from people was limited but imagine if i was actually capable of reaching out to more people i would be judged left right and center with my words taken out of context and spread around as memes judging a person with respect to a film he or she likes is nothing but naive narrow minded and self righteously entitled behavior if human beings were that simple to understand or judge there wouldn't be any murders rapes or riots in this world and we would be living in utopia where everything is nice sweet and perfect but i hate to break it to you we don't live in utopia it does not exist and never will human beings are complex creatures with multiple layers and dimensions to their personalities it's sad that the world is heading towards conforming to a simplistic view of human psychology people need to understand that not everything can be highlighted in broad strokes and there is a word called nuance and it exists for a reason speaking of nuance let me talk about the controversial fc interview featuring sandeep wangareddy out of which certain screenshots with specific quotes went viral on social media before i proceed let me make it clear that i do not endorse all of sandeep's thoughts and felt he went off the rails with a few of his comments like how he chose to address rajiv masand or the way he called critics parasites but i also also found a strange sense of honesty and straightforwardness in sandeep that i don't normally find in filmmakers today most filmmakers adhere to the norms of how one should project oneself in public and end up desperately trying to seek validation from the society by showing the world how sensitive they are but sandeep was refreshingly brutal unabashedly pure and in his own words unconditional with his thoughts in my opinion honesty and political correctness never go hand in hand because honesty flows like a river while political correctness is equal into a stagnant man made dam At 2 minutes 11 seconds of the interview when Anupama asks him why he feels the criticism against the pre-interval slapping scene is pseudo Sandeep goes on to say when you are in deeply in love deeply connected with the woman or vice versa there is a lot of honesty in it and if you don't have that physical demonstration the liberty of slapping each other then i don't see anything there if you noticed he remained gender neutral in the statement using the words vice versa and slapping each other which clearly addresses both the sides and not just the male's perspective but a few minutes later when Sandeep is asked to elaborate he was already in a state of agitation due to a previous question and in a flow switches to a first person's narrative 
behave instead of being gender neutral and says if you can't slap if you can't touch your woman wherever you want if you can't kiss if you can't use cuss words i don't see emotion there now if you noticed he has repeated the exact same statement the second time around but in a first person narrative omitting the words that address the female's perspective and the screenshots circulated on social media have completely ignored the first statement where he was gender neutral and addressed both the sides and anyone with an iota of common sense would understand that it's just a slip of the tongue because these are candid unrehearsed conversations now imagine if he had continued speaking in the gender neutral tone instead of switching to first person narrative his words would sound something like this if you can't slap if you can't touch a man or woman wherever you want if you can't kiss if you can't use cuss words i don't see emotion there as i said earlier everything is in the nuance and yes you would still argue that he has got the wrong idea of love but that's exactly the point here this film is about a toxic relationship while kabir is madly in love with preeti preeti isn't shown as any less toxic barely 15 days after kabir moves out of the city she travels all the way to his post graduation college without informing him and when he sees her all she tells him is she can't live without him and the 15 days apart felt like 15 years If that's not toxic then what is she even forces kabir to kiss her then and there so basically kabir singh is a love story between two crazy people who cannot live without each other and the complaints regarding not showing preeti's perspective is irrelevant as well because the film flows through kabir's eyes and rarely shifts his perspective to anyone else since that's the grammar of the narrative every film has its own grammar take for example whiplash it flows through the protagonist's life where we see only what the protagonist sees and do not witness the lives of any other character it is a creative choice a filmmaker can make and we cannot question that decision And then there's criticism about Preeti's silent, seemingly submissive nature, which I did not have any issues with because there are girls and boys in this world who are more silent than the others. And that silence should never be misunderstood for weakness or lack of a working brain. Preeti for me is a powerful character because she takes a stand when she feels the need to and not when the politically correct audience feels the need to. You can't blame her for being silent. That's her choice. And when she chooses to ask Kabir, "What do you like in me?" It has nothing to do with Preeti's character being any lesser than Kabir. I have been in relationships before and every single girl has asked me this exact same question. Guys and girls in college who are in love don't talk about important social issues they talk about simpler things that may not mean anything in the larger scheme of things and not every conversation between two lovers need to be relevant empowering or politically correct now you might argue all of this normalizes toxic relationships and that it also glorifies a protagonist with anger issues but hear me out on this to me kabir singh is about two individuals who are madly in love with their own idea of how a relationship should be take for instance when kabir and preeti get into a heated argument outside her house all i could see was a man with extreme anger issues ego hurt and adamant on wanting things to be done the way he sides fighting with a woman who is mature enough to understand that her partner has serious issues and instead of getting into a fight with Kabir Preeti tries to cool him down by accepting whatever he says without questioning the credibility of his claims and the way she chose to react in that scene made me only respect her even more because by choosing to safeguard their relationship over her ego she automatically proves to be the more mature and sensible person out of the two and by doing so she isn't dumb or submissive instead someone who chooses silence over noise and someone who has her priorities in place Preeti deeply values the relationship she shares with Kabir and winning an ego ridden fight is hard her priority and when kabir says you are nothing without me all i could see was a man who cannot keep his tongue under control when he is angry and when human beings get angry some of us say a lot of ugly things but hardly mean any of it kabir's hurtful and insulting words to preeti only felt like something that a person with a short up temperament would blabber at the spur of the moment i did not take his words seriously and after all this kabir reaches back home and starts his journey of self destruction to protect his ego from being damaged instead of simply talking to preeti in a level headed manner kabir's ego and temperament overshadow his love for preeti and that itself shows how flawed a person is and that's exactly what i carried back home after watching the film that anger and ego can escalate even the smallest of problems and make life a living hell for you and i don't think it's fair to generalize a story that's been narrated almost like an autobiography because such personal films are never a reflection of what our society is no i can talk about each and every scene in detail explaining why it never felt wrong to me but that would make this video way too long and extremely tiring to watch i agree filmmakers have to be careful with what they put out there but that shouldn't be at the cost of shutting up conflicting voices yes a tamil film like pariyarum perumal is important as it shows us the world through an underprivileged person's point of view but an article 15 is equally important because it addresses the same issue through a different lens while a malayalam film like kumbalangi nights should very well be celebrated and arjun reddy or kabir singh has every right to exist and be light because in order for the industry to sustain we need different voices thoughts politics and perspectives to coexist imagine a world where only a certain kind of films are allowed to be made a world where every film emphasizes on being sensitive and politically correct rather than narrating a good story forcing every filmmaker to think and feel alike isn't that equivalent to fascism and wouldn't that very idea bore the hell out of the filmmakers and viewers all said and done i am risking my reputation by making this video but still made it because i felt my voice needs to be heard since the artists of our times are on the verge of going into self censorship and once art gets mixed with political correctness then it's not art anymore that's activism and i did not choose this career to become an activist there are filmmakers who feel it's important to be politically correct all the time and it's none of my business to tell them not to be but i've always wanted to be an honest upright artist with no intention to change the world and i choose to remain one for the rest of my life and that's where i draw my line This is Abhinav signing off. Thank you for listening.